Nana Chairman, Your Excellency Nana Adudanka Kufu Aldo, Nana Nom Nana Central Regional Chairman of House of Chiefs, Honorable Ministers, Members of Parliament, Members of Diplomatic Corps, Invited Guests, I think I can call the rest, ladies and gentlemen. Almost a year ago, in September of last year, 2020, an idea which has been nurtured over a decade saw the light at a global virtual launch that was witnessed by over 3,000 people across the world via internet. Thanks to His Excellency, the President of Ghana, who addressed the occasion, expressed his support, and invited his colleagues and the peers on, in the African community to rally behind it. I'm happy to report that since then, I've been invited to over 100 radio and television stations and more than 50 Zoom meetings throughout the world to talk about the Pan-African Heritage World Museum. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we chose this day, declared by UNESCO as Africa World Heritage Day, for this ceremony, deliberately to emphasize the importance we give to the mission we have started. We, people of African descent, have been separated for far too long. Our civilization was trampled upon and deliberately destroyed. Our legacy was stolen and our self-confidence dimmed by paralyzing accounts of our past and even our present. And that is why we are fond of dis disregarding the wise sayings and indigenous knowledge of our own people and quote eloquently from sources alien to us for our daily living. We call our traditions and practices fetish and savage and we see ourselves as condemned and cursed as if we were not created in God's image. It is no secret that we people of African descent do not know ourselves. We do not trust each other, and we sometimes hesitate even to call each other my brother, my sister. Our Ubuntu, our Umoja, our togetherness, principles of living, have disappeared. The Pan-African Heritage World Museum, which we are creating, aims to bridge the gap that has widened for over 400 years. We seek to create a Pan-African Heritage City in this environment to teach, to heal, and to inspire. We have the best museologists, and scholars on our academic council from all corners of the Pan-African world, which council is authenticating the history, the arts, and the culture that we all share in our galleries. On another level, we have a two-acre plot where we will replicate a selected number of African kingdoms ancient and modern, and showcase their history, their art, their culture, and learn from their skills, craftsmanship, and indigenous knowledge, which have sustained us till today. Mr. President, sometimes we talk about alternative medicine. I get worried. Our primary medicine is our herbal plant medicine. The WHO recognizes that 70% of Africans live on herbal plants. So how come our herbal plants become the alternative medicine? That should be our primary medicine. And we are going to give a lot of prominence to it 
in our museum complex. Now, looking up to the future, our youth will enjoy our single parts, every single part of this museum complex. But most of all, our innovation and creativity hub will be where, after going around the entire city, they will have the opportunity to build on new ideas for the future. Should the self-confidence of the average ordinary African child be raised for the future as a result of the living experience we are creating here, the expectations of myself and my business team would have been met. As we say and share with you, it is only our own story that can shape our future. Because for how long shall we live in borrowed robes? I thank you. Eminent clergy, Central Regional Minister, the Minister for Tourism, Arts and Culture, Member of Parliament for Gomwa Central, Municipal Chief Executive for Ifutu Municipal Assembly, Founder, Executive Chairman, and members of the International Board of Trustees of Pan-African Heritage World. Chairman and members of the Advisory Board of the Pan-African Heritage World, UNESCO representative, or therefore Amwaku Buadu, the eighth Omahine of Breman traditional area, and the president of the Central Regional House of Chiefs, Ehuna Bubrim, Nanapra Ajinsem the sixth Omahine of Asim Renchi, Nana Apata Kufi the fifth, Udikro of Gomwa Pomaze and the Drantwahine of Gomwa Jumaku traditional area. The Dean and members of the Diplomatic Corps, distinguished political personalities, and I'm happy to see one of my competitors of 2020, Ivor Green Street, here. As also the delightful daughter of President Kwame Nkrumah, Samia Nkrumah. Glad to see all of them here today. Residents of Winneba, fellow Ghanaians, ladies and gentlemen. It is good to be back in Winneba and to cut the sword for the construction of the Pan-African Heritage World Museum. The Ghanaian people and their government are grateful for the honor of this museum being sited in Ghana. It will not only benefit all the peoples of the world, but it will also imbibe in us, in all of us, a deep consciousness and understanding of the goals and ideals of Pan-Africanism. It is fitting that today's event is taking place under the chairmanship of a highly respected traditional ruler Ehuna Bubrim Nana Prajin Sim the Sixth, or Mahineva Asim Rinchi traditional area. Ehuna Bubrim, we thank you for your presence and words of encouragement. We thank also the President of the Central Regional House of Chiefs and other traditional dignitaries for their attendance. I'm happy that work on the Heritage Museum is starting today, 5th May a day which is being commemorated the world over as African Heritage World Day, to celebrate the cultural and natural heritage of Africa. Notably, you'll all agree with me that the choice of the location of the museum, when about this famous fishing coastal town in Ghana, which served as a port town in the olden days, is very apt. I congratulate warmly the brain behind the project, the versatile Ghanaian and African patriot, Kujoyanka, the chairperson and members of the International Board of Trustees, the chairperson and members of the Executive Council, the chairperson and members of the Advisory Board, and all the interna other international and domestic organs of the Pan-African heritage world for working to bring this noble idea to fruition. Ladies and gentlemen, 
The fourth pillar, anchoring the Beyond the Return initiative, which has succeeded the hugely successful year of return, is to give unfettered support to Pan-African heritage and innovation with the objective of identifying innovative Pan-African projects. The Pan-African Heritage World Museum project is certainly an innovative Pan-African project and government is accordingly supporting its development. The precise nature of the support the government will provide is the subject of ongoing discussions between the Executive Council and the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture, and its result will be fully publicized. I'm glad that when completed, this project will provide education in the museum's galleries for visitors to learn more about the history, cultures, indigenous knowledge and ideals of our ancestors who demonstrated their resolve to protect our environment. I've been reliably informed that there's going to be a section in the museum which will have a palace of African kingdoms. Yes, we know about the great kingdoms such as Egypt, Aksum, Sudan, Ghana, Mali, Songhe, Benin, Oyo, Congo, Zulu, and Ashanti. But it would be very beneficial if we saw replicas of all these in the museum for education purposes. The time has come for all of us to take our heritage seriously. No one needs to tell us that we have a rich history made up of remarkable achievements in the arts, sciences, and technology. We have so much to learn from our antecedents and from our indigenous knowledge that have stood the test of time and are driving our development in several ways. We have a lot to learn from our past and we must apply modern technology to bring them center stage in our forward march. The museum will provide a natural residence and resting place for all the looted cultural artifacts of our continent which are housed in foreign museums and which will be returned to us, come what may. It is wholly appropriate that Ghana, which plays such a central role in the evolution of modern, of modern Pan-Africanism under her historic first leader, Kwame Nkrumah, should play host to this wonderful project. I'm looking forward to its completion and today, to the day when we shall gather here to commission the Pan-African Heritage World Museum project. May God bless Mother Africa, her children and descendants, and us all. I thank you for your attention. You have to understand that it takes uh, great energy and great vision for ideas like this to be conceived and to be begun. That's why you see, although there's nothing here, but a lot of important people have come today from all over the world because they believe in the concept of what is trying to be achieved here. And I think you also listen to uh, them on a number of occasions refer to uh, what Kwame Nkrumah also tried to do at the beginning of our, our nation, referring to both Ghana and Africa, and how we have to try and find a way of understanding ourselves, respecting ourselves, being confident in ourselves. And it is through knowledge, it is through education, and through facilities like this, that we will be able to achieve uh, those noble aims, which are very important. We've seen many of these things in the past years, uh, but it seems we are still around to the Western world. With this one, what, how different should it be? Well, I, I think uh, they, they, they made it clear uh, in, in the various speeches that were given about the types of things that were going to be represented here. Uh, the types of uh, artifacts, the type of education. And I think the more we have of these, the more we will uh, respect ourselves and be confident in ourselves. And just because in life you may have failed in the past does not mean you should not try again to succeed. Rather, you have to re-strategize and re-decide how you are going to move forward. So it's important. N maybe somebody else will come with something as good as this or even better. Maybe in Ghana or elsewhere. We have to keep on trying mm. to move forward, to get better and to succeed as people. Honorable Kojo Yanka has the vision to lead us in this direction. And as a musician, when he, he called me and he asked me, Ochame, what can you contribute? As a musician, I think my primary energies are always going into music and music promotion and music events. 
So I said that I was going to sponsor two musical concerts to bring attention to this amazing event. So the first one is happening at Plus 233 on the 29th of this month. And the second one will happen in December. The first one is happening at Plus 233. We chose Plus 233 because it is outside and all because of the COVID protocols that we need to observe. And the next one is an international Pan-African musical concert with musicians from America, um, Jamaica, Barbados, and some musicians from Ghana. The target is to be able to raise enough money so that from the people from the cultural and the music and entertainment industry can also contribute to this historic event. My brief is to gather African royal houses to come and be part of the, of the museum. You heard that there's going to be a special place where there will be chalets for different African uh, uh, royalties, African mo monarchies to replicate their own uh, uh, kingdoms in the museum. So that is my brief. I must talk to them. I'll, first of all, make a list of all the, the monarchies we have in Africa and then invite them to come and be part of the of the museum. What we need to do as Africans is to go back to our values. When they say Ubuntu, which is a South African word, I am because you are, you are because I am, those are the values we must instill in the children as they are growing up, so that they have a pride in themselves as a people. De unlearn them, as they say, all the, 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 the teachings we have been given that Africans are inferior. Let them know that we've had such great empires, which were by Africans. Like you hear, the richest man that ever lived was Masa Musa, was an African, who was trading with the Middle East already in those years. So let's teach our children so they can stand tall. When they meet white people, they mustn't shake and shiver. They must know that we are the origin of humanity. Human beings were first created on this continent before they went there, so we are the mother of the world. Let's teach the children so that they walk with their chest out. Okay, I think that in the first place, we must commend the vision bears for such a great vision. What is, it tells us is that we still have uh, people in Africa who would always think uh, beyond the box. And we want to, first of all, congratulate uh, our founder, uh, Honorable Kojo Yanka, that even when he gave birth to the vision, he didn't rest on his oaths until today that uh, the... The, the vision has seen the, the, the light of day where the sword cutting has taken place by His Excellency Nana Dodankwe Kufu. It is an indication that they will fight through till this vision has been realized. We have already started conversation on how we could contribute to the project financially. And so Speaker assures me that on Friday when uh, the Congress converged, is one of the things he's going to table uh, before the men that we have to uh, contribute. Uh, the first time when we came here, we pledged to the founder that we are going to be ambassadors of this project right from today. Today, social media has the potency to draw a lot of people, it has the potency to change a lot of narratives. So we are going to preach about this to the world through our social media handles. Uh, some of us are on radio, are on TV. We are going to project uh, this particular project so that those that have the means will find the need to contribute towards it. We will encourage students to be original, to be motivated by what uh, the African heritage a group is doing uh, that as Africans we can do more we can we can we can beat imaginations we can always do things be, be, we always think of limitations and limitations or our own thinking becomes a barrier to us achieving greatness but I think that uh, this is a testimony that we still have some great men in Africa and we must be motivated to be original we must be motivated to do things beyond what we think we can do. Thank you.